Hi everyone, I am Bindu and I am Sunny Rai and in today's video we will be talking about JSON serialization. So being a beginner you might wonder what JSON is and about serialization. So we will start this video from very basic concept but there is a slight change in today's video. So I will be representing the viewer watching this video and raising some questions that might arise in your mind while working with this topic and Sani is here to clear all my doubts. So Sani, are we ready? Yes, we are. Okay then, the first thing that I want to know is what is serialization and why do we need that? Okay, to put it in a simple way, serialization is just the process of translating your data structure or object into a JSON stream. As you can see in this figure, we have an object called message. This message object is passed as an input to our serializer which converts it into a JSON string. Now, to make you understand why it is important, I assume you are aware of how data gets transferred on the web. If not, let me explain to you. Data gets transferred over the internet as a stream of bytes. It obviously means we cannot directly transfer our complex object, right? It has to be converted into a form in which it can be transmitted. And for that, encoding our object into JSON string is must. During the process of serialization, the state of the object gets stored. The byte stream created after serialization is platform independent, so the object serialized in one platform can be deserialized on a different platform. The serialized data is received at another end is then deserialized to convert back into its original object. As you have said that serialization converts object into JSON string. So what's the term JSON refers to? Is it somewhere related to JavaScript? Yeah, JSON is based on a subset of the JavaScript programming language. And since JSON looks like a JavaScript object literal, it has got the name JavaScript object notation. But for now, let's just take it as a text format that is very lightweight and completely language independent. So this makes it the most widely used data interchange format in the web. Most of the responses you see in REST API call it's JSON. To remind you, it looks like this here language is called a key and dart is called a value so json is basically a key value structure that represents your data okay now so can you tell me how json serialization is done in flutter in flutter there are two ways to perform json serialization the first one is a manual way where you have to write all the logic by yourself and another is by using code generation libraries so being a beginner, which method should I prefer and what are the major differences between these two methods? Mm, it really doesn't matter whether you are a beginner or not to choose the right method, but it depends upon your project type. If your project is very simple one and does not use complex JSON structure, I suggest you to go with the manual way. It's easy to understand and avoids any boilerplate code. But if your project heavily depends upon REST API calls with complex and nested JSON structure, then code generation will ease your serialization process. You just have to write a few lines of code and it will do all the heavy lifting parts. As you can see here in these code snippets, the manual way of JSON serialization becomes lengthy since you have to write all the encoding and decoding logic by yourself. It also creates a high chance of having various typo errors. But in the code generation way, you can see there are only few lines of code, so the amount of code we have to write is far less. All the logic used for encoding and decoding will be automatically created for you by the libraries. Oh, uh, okay. That sounds really cool. So now that we have learned, about JSON and about serialization in Flutter. In the next video, we will dive deeper into the methods of serialization. Till then, keep watching. 